Right, sir. You're good to go. Okay. Hello, all. Uh, welcome to this uh, session of uh, NPTEL uh, on design thinking. Uh, we are uh, live uh, from Pune, both of uh, us, um, uh, Bala and uh, Siddharth is there also, joining you one more time. Say hello, Siddharth. Hello, hello everyone. Firstly, good evening and uh, happy uh, Women's Day to everyone, all our viewers and all the Wonder women around. And Firstly, I'd like to make another quick announcement to uh, all of you that we have uploaded the transcripts uh, lately, that is today. I'm uh, really sorry for the delay that we have caused uh, from our end. It is available for you to download and view. And to start off, our, uh, start off this session, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask Balasa to do a very quick recap about how am I doing because a lot of students who joined in our previous session also missed the how might be which was first 10 minutes to talk us so i'd like you uh, i'd like to request you i'm I, i'd like to ask you to do a very quick recap of how might be sir okay uh, yeah so the most uh, frequently asked questions uh, for for this uh, group are uh, two one is uh, the uh, the transcript question uh, and i was told before that transcripts are important so we have paid a lot of attention to that but unfortunately this is our first time so we're still figuring out a lot of things in as part of this course so again apologies for not uh, sticking to my promise on monday that we'll have both weeks uh, so uh, finally it's it's out there uh, the transcripts are out there for download uh, I went and checked it out myself. Uh, the text transcript is the link to click on for uh, the transcripts. You can download it as PDF and watch it. And I think it also appears as uh, closed captions. So if you click the little uh, box uh, on the YouTube uh, link, uh, I mean, uh, on the YouTube video itself, you'll be able to see the, uh, the, the, the link, the CC it says, so for closed captions. So you will be able to see the text scroll like uh, you are when you watch, uh, you know, Hollywood movies on on whatever the page, uh, the the uh, movie channels. So it's uh, that's that's there. That's out of the way. Phew. That's that was a close one. Um, the second one uh, as uh, FAQ frequently asked question is the how how might we? Uh, again, I uh, I do acknowledge and one of the students did point it out and after that uh, a couple of more. Uh, students asked about this what is this how might we that you asked in the assignment but doesn't seem to figure out in the videos we saw it twice we saw it thrice well uh, good uh, sometimes you know I, I would like to point out that sometimes um, when I'm looking for something is the best time I get to clean out my table uh, and that's probably uh, a good reason when when you're looking for how might we you you watch the videos again now trying to look for that perspective which is great so in in one sense you've uh, benefited but in another sense i have to cover this how might we uh, you can refer back to the video uh, that we recorded last time i leave a link uh, in in this uh, video as well in the chat space as well as well uh, you know so uh, what is how might we it is very simply a statement at the end of empathize uh, and you can even carry it to the end of analyze phase as what is the project objective what is the objective you have set out for yourself so that you can proceed with this project and you will know when you answer when you answer the question you will know whether your solution that you will cover in the next week has it actually addressed that has it actually solved that? Has it actually attained that? If you can, if the answer is yes, yes, I have certainly attained what I have set out myself to do. Uh, I have protected my uh, uh, my my user um, my user's head while making her comfortable comfortable uh, in the sweltering heat. Then yes, the project is done. If not, then you will have to revisit the, the steps again. So this is why the primary objective of how might we 
uh, question uh, is or questions uh, is are to set yourself an objective now uh, how might we can be uh, a couple of questions you can set for yourself or three questions you can set for yourself if you are in a team and there are several perspectives to this you can certainly set yourself different objectives uh key limited in our experience it has been that limiting it to about two or three really really helps helps you focus if you have too many you're overwhelmed you may not attain a lot of objectives uh if you have just one then it's not so uh, you know challenging so that you can go on with the task it's not motivating enough uh again uh, this is also part art and part science is that uh sometimes we need it to be challenging enough uh, broad enough that you get more and more solutions um and uh, it has to be narrow enough that it's not a you know you know world uh, economic solution kind of uh, huge broad scope kind of uh, objective in which case you are overwhelmed because it's too broad and you don't have the resources or the knowledge or uh, whatever else uh, needed to uh, attain this uh, how might we so hmw is what is referred to in the design thinking circles you will find that in lots of design thinking courses uh, we decided to adopt this because it is a very neat one sentence uh, again i have no stipulation on how long this sentence or the question needs to be or how how short it is i mean you take the you take uh, best call uh, you are the best judge um, we normally try to keep it Uh, in in one shot if you are able to explain it to somebody who is freshly entered the project and they are able to see oh, oh this is what we are trying to work on then it's a good enough uh, how might we question so this is my uh, few minutes to answer the uh, how might we question uh, siddharth so uh, any other uh, questions from last time or anything that we want to proceed on we will we can proceed uh, siddharth right sir right so what i was thinking is we had a couple of questions unanswered from our previous session so i'd like to bring those questions up for, so that you can answer them right here today so uh, the question that we missed out last time was by using design thinking insights can we insights can we design a helmet that can easily fit the hairs of lady while going to office so she can do not so she do not face helmet disturbance problem as in case in the course so okay like anything, sure somebody uh, likes this problem a lot that's what i can tell absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah i i am equally passionate about this problem and any solution uh, as you will see in the next phase uh, solutions are welcome um again uh, the the reason this question is interesting is this actually not a question but a solution uh, veiled as a question uh, solutions are uh, i always tell uh, students of my class as well is that it's uh, whenever a question is posed in the form of uh, how might we question and uh, you see that immediate uh, natural response to this is a solution you blurt out a solution great this is great this tells you uh tells us that you are really motivated about the problem and you're creative you're thinking about this okay so here's my um, suggestion to you write it down write it down on a piece of paper write it down in uh, electronic notepad or wherever or uh, you know wherever you can see it okay now here's the mechanism that is involved uh, a little dirty secret that's uh, very popular in the psycho uh, psychologists is once it's outside the system there's a this room enough in your brain now to think of new or creative solutions that you never thought before so i'm glad this uh, person has asked this question now that idea doesn't exist in his uh, brain anymore so he's going to think about newer solutions uh, better solutions and that's needed for a uh, uh, module number 3 which is solve then in module number 4 is when you will put down okay now that i have the solution i'm going to make a prototype of it can i really make a prototype of it in the given my resources given my knowledge of this particular thing what kind of prototypes can i make okay so those are the questions that will come up in module number 4 and that's when i will tell you whether the answer is yes or no i'm going to leave it open ended whether your solution works or not works uh, i like it i like the direction in which it is going 
but really you need a prototype to go to the field uh, and that's when the actual solution you will see it manifested okay so outside your head i don't know how many of you are harry potter fans it's i'm talking about one of those uh, little uh, things i don't know siddharth you might know the name of that where uh, the uh, wizard takes a wand and and does this pensive i think it's called uh, takes the memory out and puts it out okay so this is externalizing a solution so that it doesn't uh, keep regurgitating in your head and leaves room for excuse me leave, leaves room for newer solutions right thank you varun sir so uh, so next question we have is a little interesting one uh, while interviewing people for the course do we have to pay them as in in the empathy phase <laughs> okay very very interesting uh, normally uh, you don't have to uh, it, the, the reason is that uh, well let, let's put it this way that if you're going to help them in some sort of way uh, later uh, and they are going to be your paid customers they will pay then that's the usual model but uh, it's not unheard of to pay uh, people to attend your service give them a coupon uh i i've seen that it's it's not so uncommon uh, at all so uh, if you have the resources uh if you have i mean if that's the only way you can get them to talk to you uh, i mean use the resources wise, wisely but this is rather uncommon i would think uh they'll be nice enough to spend some time and help you out because you you can frame it in such a way that uh, hey uh, so you know uh, Uh, we are doing this from such and such an organization to help people like you and most times 9 out of 10 times people will be willing to spend some time uh, unless of course they will politely say no because maybe they they think that you're trying to sell something so they will you know steer away from you but 9 out of 10 times you will get uh, kind people who will come and uh, help you out with their views uh, uh, when you're trying to interview them and i would say uh, rather than uh, the, the we will have some interview tips i don't know if uh, we covered them in the videos but usually uh, going with a solution in mind and saying would you like uh, uh, you know uh, to do this would you uh, and say a solution would you won't you like a helmet uh, which will guard your uh, head and will also keep you away from sweat um people know most probably say yes because this is obvious but you're not getting any uh, useful insight out of this um and uh, i will also i don't know if i've already done it i will share some uh, youtube uh, video lists um that you can uh, a playlist that has a, a, some of these videos have some interviewing tips as to how to interview uh, people and how to extract meaningful insights out of that out of this so um siddharth i'm i'm holding you accountable we need to share this uh, uh, youtube list i have a whole bunch relevant if it is not already shared right sir right, sir i am noting that down so great we will do that definitely all right so uh, we have a question coming from our previous session okay uh it was about the ppt oh my my bad sir my bad sorry so i like okay we have not got any questions coming up in the session yet sir so i would okay. like to request you to uh, talk about our anal analyze case which has which was the main uh, uh, module in our second week course so i would like you to give a very short recap of the analyze case in like 5 to 10 minutes probably maybe we can get keep we can get questions from our viewers uh, uh siddharth i remember one question uh, from our last time uh, as well uh, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, if I, i i don't know i, I i'm just uh, i'm trying to recall is is uh, design thinking uh, applicable for uh, Uh, developing teaching aids i don't know if it came this week or for last week uh, can it be applied to developing teaching aids okay right. so again uh, design thinking as a methodology is quite agnostic or it does not really mind whether you're from the services or from the product you're a teacher you're a shopkeeper you're an engineer you're a pilot 
it doesn't really differentiate this is a structured thinking methodology uh, a, a guide a ladder so to speak to help you with uh understanding who is uh, going to be benefited out of whatever you do so my in my opinion uh, a teaching aid is uh, something that you would use in class to teach students uh, in front of you so the user is uh, of or the consumer of the teaching aid uh, is a uh, student uh, um, uh, is if you're teaching other employees i mean sorry uh, employees in a corporate then the teaching aid become the user becomes the employee uh, so it depends on where the context is so let's assume you are in a classroom and uh, that's the most common scenario in teaching aids uh, you're in a classroom you're in uh, you're uh, using the teaching aids to convey something of use uh, pertinent to your syllabus to your students so the users automatically are your students so now try to see it from their perspective one way is to actually go to that side sit in the classroom with the teaching aid on if it's a powerpoint presentation okay like uh, or a, or a, um, you know you brought a chart okay you're you're hanging in the class this is a teaching aid uh, and now you're looking at it and uh, now you can judge whether you're able to see it you go to the last row you go to the first row this is what i do in class and can they see it if it's a audio aid uh, can they uh, are they able to listen to the audio clip in the last row in the front row in the side rows this is what you're doing is role playing you're empathizing with your users and this way you're able to find out whether the audio tool actually the uh, teaching aid actually works so this is the empathize phase in case then you can go even more in detail uh, if it is the first time you're you're trying to develop a new teaching aid then you can actually uh, sit through your own classroom uh, or ask uh, another of your your teaching assistants your uh, another uh, a colleague your your, your own uh, co-teacher uh, somebody else who is an expert in the field to sit in the back and probably role play as a student and see what they have to do so this would be another uh, way to do it then the third way is to actually interview the students and find out what is it that is really bothering them uh maybe you see that some people are not uh, able to keep up with your speed maybe some people are uh, bored uh, like uh, i don't know if I, yeah i showed you the picture of a person uh, of a class uh, of a student uh, who is totally bored and is looking in the other direction maybe it's one of those you might want to find out about those people so it's it's applicable there as well so this is sort of a starting point for you to be thinking about uh developing teaching aids uh using the me uh, method of design thinking so this is one question i remember uh, siddharth right sir thank you for that uh while you were talking about these two uh, methods it reminded me of uh me nitin and supratyo coming and empathizing in your class at sibm when we interviewed <laughs> all the students uh, yeah innovation entrepreneurship kind Oh yes, oh yes. You saw it from the other side. Right? Yes, yes. We were actually <laughs> sitting at the back bench, uh, observing all the activities, what everyone was doing. We were observing the presentations, and yeah, you made us actually practically do it. Right, what right. What all right. you have? Uh, what all you just spoke? So, sir, uh, we have questions coming up from our live session now. So okay. I'd like to come up with our first question that is coming from Girish. In multi-y analysis, why plotting the graph? Why what plotting the graph? Kindly explain why to take the variable in x and y in opposite directions. Uh, okay, I'm not sure I completely understand the question. Uh, um, I am going to uh, assume that the, the question is about why are you taking two extremes uh, like high and low? Um, no, no, sir. I will repeat the question. What I am thinking is. Okay. Uh, we had the while we were doing the custom uh, plotting the graphs in our case study we had taken the opposite directions while we were doing the uh, time versus number of nodes okay time, uh, time taken for ah, okay 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 I'm, I got it. Right, i'm thinking that is the question okay the a great question then so uh, uh, here is a little trick that we play uh, a very good catch uh, girish i i, I really 
see that you're very observant. Um, so the trick that we use in this is that uh, what you want improved uh, should always be on the increasing side. So we place it that way. It's uh, sort of unnatural, but it's very easy to convey this that as you go up the Y, uh, it's the things are getting better. This is what you want. And as you go to the right, uh, the on the x-axis is when it goes to one extreme where you think is better. But by all means, you can always flip it and do it uh, like like as if it is the uh, typical parabolic curve, which is okay. But visually, I am trying to convey that top uh, is better and right is one extreme, left is one extreme. So uh, what we want really is that top and uh, um, top right should be the sweet spot where we want both. Uh, we want to be able to uh, for the student to come on time, okay. Uh, as well as uh, we want the uh, uh, we want the um, what is the X? I forget. Uh, he, we want him to be uh, sleeping late also. So sort of what the student wants and what the teacher wants should be uh, satisfied. So. Both the parties involved, the conflict should be such that uh, we want both the parties involved. So it's sort of a visual uh, way to represent that as well. So in the strictest sense, it is not a typical XY plot. Um, uh, although some of my students have done it as a data-wise, uh, um, you know, plotting, it is possible. You can do it. Uh, but it is more a representative, qualitative, more a, uh, uh, what do you say, a Boolean, as, as they say in uh, software parlance. So it is either true or false, true or false. So that's what we are attempting to do. But by all means, you know, try to flip it and see if it makes sense to you. Uh, this, in my experience, conveys immediately, okay, where is the uh, direction that we have to go? Uh, normally, what happens is in this XY, when you draw it, people try to say, okay, let me do partial X and partial Y. That's an optimization. But here, both parties end up being dissatisfied. Okay. So the student comes 15 minutes late uh, and he goes to uh, sleep 15 minutes uh, earlier than normally he does. It's not really satisfying uh, both the parties. Okay. It's sort of mid between a compromise solution. But here as design thinkers, we want to think, really push ourselves into thinking way outside what is the norm, uh, what is possible. Uh, so that's why we set out a challenge saying, can we satisfy both parties involved? And that's where we have always found the goal to be. You know, the, that's, the, uh, that's the sweet spot. So uh, great question. And uh, yeah, I think uh, hopefully I conveyed what I had in my mind. Yes, sir. Hopefully we can win. So uh, the next question we have is coming from Mr. Murugan. Okay. Uh, can we ask candidate, have they used or come across any of the solution? Or maybe I'm expecting that they have visualized. Uh, that is uh, the solution we are uh, going to suggest if they've already visualized it in their mind. Well, yeah. uh, we are at, in the interview phase. We are really not trying to get a solution from them. We are trying to see what kind of experience they're going through. We're going through with a very objective, open mind. Uh, we are not there to sell our service. This is not a sales meeting. Uh, this is not to convince them that whatever solution we are thinking, uh, they should also be thinking. This is not uh, that. The empathize phase is to truly understand what our users are going through. Uh, what are, uh, let's say in my uh, student case, it's so what is the student actually going through? As a professor, I will never know. Uh, as a uh, workshop owner, I will never know why is it that my customers are not reaching my, uh, after three years of service, how come they are not coming back to my workshop? I, I would never know if I'm thinking as a workshop owner. This exercise is to make sure that I think like them. It is not about the user. It is about uh, change in our own thinking, the design thinkers thinking. So uh, even if they do suggest that, hey, you know, this is the solution that I think from the user, actually, it's of not much use to you. Uh, it doesn't really tell what they're going through. So um, that is our main goal. Uh, this solution really is uh, 
solutions can change it it in it will change it uh, whatever you are thinking right now at the first stages will definitely morph itself will change itself in fact you will even throw it into the trash bin uh, you will you will come up with something else completely different uh, because another insight has come through in the second iteration something else comes up and it ends up looking very very different so i would suggest don't be hung up on your solution so much i know it's very difficult because you came up with this you are emotionally attached uh, i've been in this so i exactly know what uh, you're going through uh, i want them to tell me that solution that i am thinking of it's it's almost like magic you know like mind magic huh? but uh, really that's that's not why we are doing the emphasize phase you're trying to get into the other person's uh, shoes and trying to see their point of view their perspective so this is my answer to that my attempt to answer that question <laughs> Right, so I can definitely watch for that because we ourselves have gone to the uh, our student market and empathized with them, uh, got their feedback, came back, did our uh, did our analysis solution part on the prototype. Again, went back, tested. We did this I, I iterative times, and we never fixed on a solution. So I can definitely watch for that, sir. So. Coming to our next question, we have it coming from Mr. Praveen. Okay. Simulated session on customer journey mapping for class notes. Got the feeling that the student is coming to class to take note and not learn. How to avoid such loaded simulation? Tips? Question mark. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm not sure is what simulated means. Is it uh, uh, making a mock class so that uh, yes, we simulate sir. what is happening, what happens in class? Um, yeah it has that drawback that you ex it mentioned exactly because now they are pretending uh, and not doing the uh, real thing uh, if possible because in lots of times it is not possible to get to the user site itself uh, as much as possible uh, try to be in the real environment in a real situation it is very difficult i understand uh, there are lots of constraints in some cases uh, you have to just make uh, simulated uh, sessions uh, but I would say it's worth the, the effort, worth the time that you spend in a real situation, uh, looking and watching, uh, real obs uh, observing real uh, users in their real environment. Um, uh, because uh, that way you can see it from their perspective. I don't know if, uh, I mean, I did cover this in the uh, video as well, is and ido.com uh, uh, the the organization had uh, a uh, video uh, strapped on to his temple here and he went through the emergency room procedure and asked the nurses and doctors to pretend that he was an emergency room uh, patient uh, you can go to that extent i mean uh, simulated um, uh, that you actually get a feel for what's going on okay yes it will be fake it will be simulated but if you really, um, I mean, in that case, uh, it would have been really tricky to capture and video record and, and interview somebody who's going through an emergency room procedure because then they're in no state to answer your question. But this is probably the closest. It has its drawbacks, but at least if you get, get a useful insight or insights, uh, well and good. Uh, it's definitely worth the effort. Uh, and you can be creative about this as well. Uh, you can. I I uh, remember somebody doing. Uh, I don't know, going on YouTube and finding out all the uh, user feedback uh, written in the dialogue. Uh, also, you can even use that. They they marked. Uh, they kept marking numbers. Uh, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Marks when they saw negative feedback on YouTube for their product. Uh, this can be a great like, uh, and there are several websites which do that also. So if you are constrained for resources, constrained for time, uh, and you cannot have access to, uh, you know, you are you are in one part of the globe and the, your real users are in another part of the globe. Uh, there are ways to do this uh, indirectly, but real customers again. Uh, there are several websites where people do uh, leave reviews. Uh, so that's something that uh, uh, you can try out as well. So, um, a long-winded answer for your simple question, but I, I think there is value in um, not doing simulated, uh, trying to uh, do real uh, users wherever possible. Wherever possible. Right, sir. Makes a lot of sense. 
Okay, so we have our next question coming from Mr. Nagesh. He says, going back to an earlier reference comment of yours, please share an example of garnering insights during an interview to make it more meaningful. Uh, he also has a continuation question. Continuation question. What are the key tenets of a meaningful interview? Um, so it's as simple as, uh, oh, I didn't know about that. If uh, the answer is yes, and you got that a lot uh, out of your interview, then it's a very meaningful interview. I would just walk away with that. If I say, oh, I, di I didn't know that. I always ask my students when they do it, or I'll, uh, also note down in my notes when I'm doing a field interview, uh, are there any insights or any things, points that I've noted down as, oh man, I didn't know about this. Wow, that's cool. So that is probably something that you want to uh, make a note of. And that would be your meaningful uh, observation, right? So uh, for example, again, going back to the same example that I showed, this, this guy, uh, when he viewed back the video recording in the emergency room recording, he found that there were a lot of time spent uh, on just watching the roof of the uh, emergency room, right? Now, that is a problem, a serious problem, because you are going through traumatic procedure and there's nothing to, you know, make your nerves cooler and uh, make it nicer for you. And all you, do, you see for the most of the time is the ceiling. Okay, that is a problem statement that you can work on. That's a meaningful insight. So even that one insight, if you can uh, work on it, is a great uh, thing for your project. So uh, in design thinking, another thing with interviews is also, uh, we don't go for numbers. So the great uh, you know uh, surveys which cover 100,000 inter interviewees or uh, survey respondents or, or even 1,000, uh, it may be great uh, look. Uh, to look on paper but designers typically they don't look for quality uh, i'm sorry quantity as much as they look for quality the quality of insights that come out of this now uh, after that you might at the last stage you might want to go and check it back check it with other set of users see how it works all that but it's a continuous learning process so here uh, meaning is associated with oh i didn't know about this it's about you it's about discovery about how much you know about the user they themselves may not know about all this uh, also by the way don't uh, so earlier my uh, thought was voice of customer this has to be taken as gospel okay taken as the ultimate truth write it down and we have to solve it unfortunately even the customer has no clue what they really want uh, lots of times most times okay uh, there are some extreme users who may have a you know uh, uh, have some uh, you know, inkling about what they are thinking about. Uh, they may know what they're talking about, but still I would take that as a starting point and then maybe analyze it uh, in the analysis phase and see where they're going with this. You know, okay, that's that's an actually you derive meaning out of this. So again, I gave you a lot for one simple question. <laughs> right, sir, right, right. Okay, thank you for that, sir. And right, here we have a very kind of a general question coming up in regard of design thinking. Okay. In what ways is design thinking the future of today's technology? As <laughs> by Shreesh Kulkarni. Okay, so it has nothing to do with future technology per <laughs> se. I would say it is solving. Uh, so uh, the, uh, my one of my uh, professors from Italy answered it beautifully. Uh, he said design thinking and innovation is about the present. It's not about the future. Uh, to make your life uh, better right now, uh, that's where we are targeting. So there's some experience that's going on uh, that needs to be improved. Uh, uh, that's what we are looking for. Whereas the future, future of technology, et cetera, uh, is uh, only decisions that you make right now uh, uh, that will actually cascade. So uh, there are, there are uh, in fact, branches called technology forecasting, where uh, we use data from the past and try to predict the future based on that uh, in a scientific manner. Uh, so I would say, this is again my opinion, and I agree with uh, my professor, is that um, uh, design thinking and innovation methods are for today, uh, today what you can solve today, the, the problems and needs of today, uh, whereas uh, the future of technology is way into the future, 
and uh, you know with gestation period of 5 to 10 years of development so uh, my uh, my opinion is that you will need other methods like technology forecasting uh, for for those so that that's what i would think would be uh, the right so I, i'm not quite sure if design thinking really applies for this uh, although i could say you know uh, these iterations uh, with with many iterations you can actually predict okay this is probably where this is going uh, you can take some hot uh, pot shots at uh, where it could be going uh, like if you had seen uh, uh, i may i don't know i'm i'm not so sure if uh, it will really help also even with iterations uh, but you, you will have some sort of uh, feel once you go through many iterations okay this is where it seems to be heading um, but i won't vouch uh, uh you know that design thinking will really help you in the for um uh, you know stuff in the future okay bala sir thank you for that uh, so that is all we have questions from the live chat sir okay i will uh, i am looking for some questions from our forum as well for you to answer okay sure <laughs> Meanwhile, if you have any uh, interesting topics to share with our viewers, that you are most welcome, sir. Okay, so we are doing time filling. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, really, I don't have a, a song and dance for. Uh, well, I have a question coming up from our viewers. Okay. Right. So this is coming from Mr. Goro. Okay. In customer journey mapping, is it advisable to cover various personas? For Siddharth and Teams workshop, I noticed that both personas shared similar personality attributes. Keen, diligent students. <laughs> yeah, I think you already answered this question once in the forum, but it would be yeah. nice again if you answer this. No, uh, I I think it's a very good question. Uh, I, in uh, again, in my experience with a design project uh, we were doing in Italy, uh, we had I think seven personas. Uh, we had a chef we had a manager we had a, uh oh why uh, uh, a student uh, all sorts of I, i i remember six or seven personas we had and we had cute little icons for each of them so it was fun to have all of that but what we soon realize is it's a lot of lot more work now to do because now we have to track each of these personas and try and look live through their journeys each of them and it actually compounds our work uh, it did compound our work uh, in the project uh, we had that many uh, you know uh, journeys to track uh, problems to look at and then finally uh, look at so it's it's fun in one respect that we can actually see uh, you know from various perspectives uh so i agree with you that there were similarities in uh, what the these three gentlemen uh, four gentlemen came up with um that is because all four of them were probably interviewing a similar set of people so uh so you could see that they were mine the kind of information that they were mining were all uh, similar uh, but they could go to different types of uh, uh, schools different types of universities different types of institutions and that actually can give them a lot more insights and the persona gets richer so it it is possible uh, to uh, have many more persona in fact uh, the more people you interview you can add more attributes to your persona also uh, this is something that i've also observed uh, that uh, uh, but but the essence again is for you to visualize what they're going through if Uh, multiple personas can give you various uh, thinking directions and can uh, make your product or service uh, align to all of these you are able to do uh, uh, pull off all this then why not i mean i i i wouldn't stop you from doing multiple things helping more people at the same time right right thank you sir thank you bala sir uh, so we have mr praveen coming back on a comment to his previous question okay uh he says i meant that customer journey mapping participants for class notes were driving the idea that students main job is notes rather than learning since they already had solution so would you like to add anything to this sir uh wait i meant that 
customer jai ba driving the idea that main job is notes uh okay uh, what i interpret is the student's job is to actually learn and notes is just one way to get there right. why are you focusing on notes or something like that i i would assume um well uh yes you are right the main functionality of a class is learning uh so you could achieve it through several ways it needn't be only notes it could be like what you and i have right now uh, a live session uh we could have it through uh, you know making them go out in the field and do stuff uh so there are notes uh, not uh, notes required there you could make them uh you could make them uh, reverse the roles you could make them teach uh, so that way uh, you, you could actually uh, see that they they are actually learning absolutely agreed with you that's not uh, what the function taking down notes is not the ultimate function of a classroom but what siddharth and co were attempting in the case study was that now given that they are indeed taking uh, notes how can i make that life better how can i make their life better so what are the uh, all the associated attributes with note taking now note taking comes in the first place because we cannot store all of this information in our head at one go um uh, particularly when it's concepts when I, when it is uh, things that are spelled out uh, try attending more than one lecture at a, at a time and and trying to tell somebody else what all went through in two lectures it's going to be virtually impossible so that's why we write down notes um in so th given that that is the stage now we can also make sure that oh well we don't have to have notes it can be something else uh, if that's what you are leaning towards definitely if that's the insight that's coming from your uh, interview field interview by all means try to make sure that they learn and also keep in the keep in mind that if the prof tells them four or five concepts they're not going to be able to keep it in their head can your solution actually satisfy that requirement also look at it from their perspective okay from the uh, note taker or the student perspective okay are they learning it can they retain many of these concepts in their head with the with the instrument that they have in front of them right now it's notes because it's cheap it's available everywhere they are able to do this they are well versed with this what uh, a university student goes through what 12 13 14 years of note taking maybe if it's a masters then it's more than 15 years of note taking so they are they are experts at this okay given that how can i make their lives uh, uh, better that's what siddharth and co uh, really were attempting at that i, I don't know I, I, this is what i understood as the uh, question uh, it's tough when i don't have the person in front of me uh, to get what they're saying right so it's really tough to understand the question in that terms and so now we know the limitation of notes also <laughs> that's not going to really convey uh, as well <laughs> right right thanks so thanks for taking this up on behalf of us Uh, so we have our next question from Mr. Morugan. Okay. Uh, in case in the customer journey, in the customer map journey exercise, we considered for school-going children, but interview was with college students. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So to answer that again, it was. uh we had two different cases one was the school going student or in the in uh, sam and college going student in prince so we did both the interviews and the one which we were short for the our viewers in the course was the interviews which we did with the college going college students from sid but uh, we also went and spoke to a uh, lot number of students from schools and teachers in pune basically uh, so that is one thing we could not we were not able to show it in the course videos but i can definitely tell you that that is one thing we've done from our end actually i would like to add something is that uh, i i was not too happy or uh, um, you know i was pretty sensitive about recording uh, children's video um, and putting it on youtube without their parents permission it gets into that whole loop uh, also Uh, and that is one more reason why we did not uh, do that uh, 
uh, we did not record it in the first place because of this limitation that we needed to obtain the permission of the principal of uh, the uh, student the students are uh, not the student because they are they are a minor you have to ask their parents as well it has to be in written how many students you're going to interview this is not uh, sure either so all this sort of led us to saying let's steer clear of recording students let's uh, interview it with their permission this should be okay but with college students it was easy because they were all adults uh, we knew the institutes that we are operating in we uh, sought permission because i was the professor in the class so they all all i had to do was just nod my head like that and the permission is given right so this is uh, practical constraints in uh, recording is why we did not have the videos of uh, the school students right so thanks for taking the take time saying this also i <laughs> i didn't want to bring this up but you said it yourself <laughs> no it's important uh, actually yeah th this actually brings us to an important point is uh, uh, I, i know this may be obvious to most people but still if you are going to going on field interviews and you are going to interview people uh, if you are going to take pictures or videos always 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 seek their permission if they are minors seek their parents permission never ever record videos or uh, audio or anything that without their permission and uh, going on public with with uh, with this video is never a good idea so uh this is a strong recommendation from our side it may be uh, blatant and obvious to lots of people but still if people are starting out with interviews this is something that i would definitely try to drill into people's head never take pictures never take videos never take audio clips of people uh without asking them with prior permission uh, you can proceed to that even uh, or if you are taking videographs uh, this is again this is uh, uh, common sense but still i would like to uh, convey even while taking videos uh, in baja caves we sought permission from uh, the archaeological survey of india authorities there uh, on the field and that's when we were allowed to record it uh, and we have uh, we went ahead and did that so always always record with the permission of the participants right, that is my disclaimer for the day it's <laughs> a right, point from the market <laughs> okay so we have another question coming up here Uh, is the role of an engineer in a design thinking team an important one since most of the solutions to generic problems these days are also tech solutions oh okay uh, <laughs> that, uh it, this is a necessary evil um, <laughs> i being uh, uh, you know my ta and i both of us are uh, engineers so uh, i am going to say this that sometimes uh, knowing uh, too much tech solutions actually clouds our mind from very very simple solutions so uh, sometimes you want to remove your engineering mind uh, and uh, go without sensors go without high tech gadgets gps uh, you will actually come up with much simpler solutions much easier solutions uh, you wouldn't even need a method sometimes um, for me i need this method because my head is so clouded with other stuff that i already know Uh, that it's so difficult to unlearn uh, stuff uh, sometimes it gets in the way uh, tech solutions we we keep saying it because we see it all around us we think but there are so many non tech solutions that work so well um, in fact i keep telling people again in note taking and uh, siddharth may take on of offense of the, uh, at this is that uh, still note taking on pen and paper is the highest resolution Uh, experience money can buy okay Absolutely. it's better than most of your uh, gadgets uh, it's the best experience ever uh, money can buy so yeah i can see siddharth's thumb thumbs up um, <laughs> so so technology uh, although it helps it's still a tool uh, it, uh, and uh, if it helps you go ahead and use it uh, if not so it just gets in the way sometimes it makes it a bit complicated i i'll give an example from my previous company uh and it was uh, we all we all did a face palm when we heard of the solution after this because we saw uh, thinking about this right so we had uh, a, a water cooler okay in our company and of course used to provide us with cool water uh, we used to go there okay uh, about uh, 10 meters from there was another gadget 
which used to provide us uh, with hot water okay uh, later an innovation came and both these could be actually in the same device you might uh, you know people may have seen this you know red tap for hot water and blue tap for cold water so what did people do when they wanted normal water i don't want hot water because too hot cold water no i don't want it what do you do when you want normal water you take half uh, hot water and half cold water and you get normal water okay then somebody hit up on the idea wow i have a brilliant idea let's place a can of normal water by the side of it and it was it so you are wasting energy in cooling the same water and heating the same water to get normal water when you just open the tap and you could have got normal water so we are so trained to thinking of um, you know these uh, off the shelf off the shelf solutions that we actually sometimes miss out on the most obvious ones okay so uh you would see in the next phase as well i i'm glad these questions are coming up right now because they're naturally leading to the next phase uh, next module which is uh, uh solve uh in which the first step for you is to empty your head empty your head of all the solutions you can think of to, uh, and then start thinking about newer solutions okay and again the the uh, wizard way is to remove it from your head by writing it all down showing it to your uh, teammates this is the best way of getting rid of all your uh, existing ideas and that way you will get fresh insights fresh thinking of uh, new ideas right thank you sir thank you bala sir for those words uh, so we have mr murugan coming up with another question here while yeah. taking notes when i refer back i recollect voices of master teacher what i what said in the class does it taken care Okay. Uh, um, uh, my understanding of the question is that uh, when somebody is speaking, uh, they have a certain body language, they have a certain tonal quality. Is that what it is? Could what it could be? Or how did you interpret this question? As I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, sir. I am thinking while taking notes, while the student takes notes, is he uh, writing what he is understood, or is simul while is or is simultaneously listening to the teacher, or is it uh, taken care of? Something say in this line, so I cannot. Okay, okay. I'll I'll attempt. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a tricky one. Uh, yeah, it's a little tricky question. Sir. Yeah, tricky question. Um, my assumption is that uh, uh, the the um, uh, when you're writing it, you process it and you write it. So uh, here's an interesting one that I read somewhere uh, between typing on the keyboard and writing. Okay. uh in writing when you are writing and particularly when you are listening to somebody and are you are taking down notes you are actually processing the some amount of processing in your brain uh, which happens while you are taking down notes it's uh, very difficult to keep track of all that the professor is saying and you know you can't take every word that they say so you you actually excuse me do some uh, synthesis on your own so there's some amount of other parts of the brain which operate when you actually take down notes uh, whereas in typing actually it's faster uh, you can actually follow a professor uh, quite well uh, when they are saying things and you are typing it uh, the note taking is faster it's very efficient that way but however the synthesis is very limited uh you are not actually this is uh, i i actually quit on uh, typing down notes when i uh, read about this because it turned out to be true that when i read through my typewritten notes i found out that i really didn't recall oh this was what somebody is saying really i don't even remember uh, hearing this uh whereas when i wrote down notes uh, with my hand on a piece of paper and i look at my notes um, uh, and i say oh yeah now I, i can actually recall uh, what that person was saying to some extent i mean i don't recall every detail uh, but i can actually re recall what they were saying even with uh, you know what looked to somebody else as coded notes it actually brought me back some amount of recall uh, same with pictures or sometimes i even forget i oh wow i, I was there i don't even re remember some of these pictures that i took in some places when i tour around places i really don't recall uh, but but whereas when you say make a little sketch of that you actually tend to recall more yeah so this is my attempt at answering the question hopefully uh, it's answered his question yeah 
Yes, sir. I think you have answered his question successfully because he's come back messaging saying that you got the point, professor. Okay, great, great, excellent. Okay. Cool then. So we have another question coming from Mr. Praveen. What is design thinking to solve my own problem rather than anybody else? If it helps other others well and good, any comments? So it's a not a question as such but yeah 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 I, I understand no this this was a conflict i had in my mind when i started out saying hey i am the best user i know uh, and uh, why don't i start with me and uh, you know write down my problems i am able to give insights on this problem uh, and i will be able to solve uh, i don't know how many of you remember uh, the uh, curio uh, he actually did that this was actually my own story of when I look at a problem, I said, I'm the ultimate user. I should be able to come up with excellent solutions. And I write out something. Lots of times we are uh, uh, we are sort of blinded uh, by our own biases. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to get out of that bias. Uh, but you, you can be a starting point. Uh, you can actually start out. There's no, no problem in starting out. But I still think you should go and see how many people are like you? You know, you can start with yourself. This is the problem I have. Uh, you know, my battery runs out or, or I'm not able to type fast or I'm not able to take down good notes. You can start there. But more people you talk to, people like me, you will get different insights, things that you didn't think about, things that you already have but you probably didn't think about. Uh, those things come into light. So, uh, again, we are not great customers we are not even great at uh, helping ourselves apparently this is also i read some uh, scientific studies that we are great at helping others rather than ourselves uh, so this actually uh, this is how the society works this is how we are helping out each other um, and uh, this is how the you know the, the we call it business you call it services you call it products whatever but it's still how we are interconnected and this is how it, uh, uh, at least this is my understanding of how it works. So um, you can start with yourself, but try to see how many other people are like you uh, and try and speak to them, get their insights, and you can proceed. Right. Thank you, Bhavasa. Thank you very much. So we have our next question coming from Mr. Girish again. Uh, if we found multiple conflicts, is it necessary to convert them into two parties and analyze from design thinking perspective or how to handle multiple conflicts? Yeah. Oh, so, well, <laughs> yes, yeah. this is a good one. This is, a, a, let's say, a common situation that uh, we, uh, the reason we did not cover this in class is it's a little complex because the um, this is the prefrontal cortex, as it's called. Uh, it's not able to handle multiple factors. So uh, the best we can do is, they say, 5 plus or minus 2. So you can, and particularly if you're taking a decision, two parameters is the best you can do, uh, apparently. This is our limitation uh, for, uh, of our human brain, Okay, the dec deciding part of the human brain. right? So with that in mind, we have condensed the conflict down to 2. Okay, so I would say, uh, you know, go with the most important conflict, uh, the thing that will make a difference in your uh, users, from your user's perspective. So usually it is what you can provide as a design thinker in your product or service uh, and what the user is going through. Um, it's usually a technical limitation that you have or, a, uh, or some sort of you know, budgetary limitation that you have or a spatial requirement that you have, some kind of limitation from your side, and it could be another requirement from the user's perspective. And this is a conflict. Uh, if you try to resolve this, uh, you can actually proceed with the solution. So for the other conflicts, uh, my suggestion is to write them also, write them down also, and keep thinking about it, whether it makes sense, whether your ultimate solution actually solves this. Uh, also, you can look at it from that perspective. If you can, if you're able to solve uh, both these conflicts with one solution, nothing like it. I mean, it's the best case scenario. But if you're not able to, you're at least convinced that you've taken up something that's very important for your customer, uh, for your user, and you've proceeded with that. Sometimes we will have to make that choice and move ahead 
and then you can always revisit it saying this is a sub problem that i have i will address it in my uh, second iteration my third iteration you can always do that thank you sir thank you bala sir for answering that and that also brings us to the end of our session time so i would like to thank all our viewers and participants who actively posted their questions here and anything you'd like to say on our closing notes sir well uh, thank you for being so active on the forums as well as on uh, linkedin i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry you uh, youtube <laughs> as well linkedin and saying uh, on youtube as well uh, asking these uh, wonderful question making us think uh, it's it's really of value us uh, value to us for uh, for having spent your time an entire hour and also we do understand that your students your teachers your uh, people who are working or other things to do but you're still able to spend some time with us and learn all this uh, we really thank you and hope you can continue this in the coming modules also um uh, we'll see you in uh, module number 3 uh, hopefully you will like it and uh, we'll be able to meet you next week uh, same time 4 o'clock uh, friday india time that is uh, so we i had a good time uh, siddhar thank right. you for uh, hosting this right sir right sir i had a great time. all the questions that are coming up are really thoughtful to us as well we have to think and it was a great learning experience to us answering all these questions so it has been a great uh, session i think and i hope all our viewers have enjoyed this session and we will be seeing you see all our viewers next friday for pm again so until then bye bye guys have a great weekend bye 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 everyone thanks bye bye